Hey guys, Kyle Bill here. So today we are going to move on to part four of my level four mission guide. Today we're going to be talking about the changes they made to the Marauder and the TLDR. They are the new kings of level four mission running. So I broke this video up into the timestamps below if you want to jump ahead. The first part is going to be me running one of the missions on the live server. Then we're going to go into talking about my golem fit. I also have a video of an MTU hunter actually landing on me. And last part is we're going to talk about my new bookmarks. Somebody actually pointed out something pretty funny in my first video that has to do with RMT. So I talk about that at the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoy that. If you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Be sure to leave a like. If you have any questions, you could also reach out to me in game. Just message the cowbell and I reply to all messages. So today we are going to be checking out the Golem. And with the Marauder update, it got a massive buff. 50% uh, extra DPS when you're in the Bastion mode. So let's uh, give this guy a little test and, and see what we could do. And as soon as I get these guys locked up, I'll show you the, the numbers. You see, the um, hardest thing is going to be managing missiles now. Let's do this. Next target. <laughs> it absolutely demolishes everything in sight. The hardest thing is going to be missile management and trying to tractor everything in as uh, quick as you kill it. Let's do this. And let's see if I even get to show you the fitting. I'm killing this stuff so fast, guys. It's, it's difficult. But uh, this changed Bastion mode changed to 30 seconds, which is awesome. They also reduce the signatures of Marauders, so they're harder to scan down. I've actually heard that they're impossible to scan down. I haven't tested it myself, but uh, take that with a grain of salt. Oh, look, I'll actually turn on a repper. This isn't a cap-stable fit right now. It gets about eight minutes with the setup I got. Again, I'll show you guys in a second. Hard to count. So there's one, there's two, and three volleys. Let's see if three takes them out. It looks like it will. This is so cool. I have not even put my MTU out. It looks like I'm going to be using my Noctis a lot more. So all you got to do, hit Control B, bookmark, bookmarks the spot. And let's take out these last two guys. Curious to see how it does against frigates. And this is... If it was to show you, uh, you could probably run a polarized fit uh, pretty easily. This thing... This thing's pretty darn tanky. I have been messing around. Oh, okay. It looks like that's the mission. So let's do this. I'm going to get out of Bastion mode. Hey guys, welcome back. So this is my Golem fit. I'm going to go ahead and load uh, short range ammo. So let's go with Rage Torpedoes. And in my tops, I have Torpedo Launcher 2s. And I'm going to turn these tractor beams off just for display purpose. Um, you may be using them, you might not. I tend to just, because these missions go so fast, uh, I just come back and bookmark and go to the site with my Noctis. So I'm not actually salvaging with my Golem. Uh, Bastion module, if we go to show info, you can actually see <laughs> the missile damage bonus is actually bugged, should say plus 50%. Same thing with turret damage. Um, I don't know why there's still been that visual bug, but anyway, uh, they lowered the Bastion module time from 60 seconds uh, down to 30 seconds, which is great. So it's um, really easy to cycle on and off and position your ship as needed. In the mids, we are running two of the target painters. I have two cap batteries, two guidance computers, and a X-type extra-large shield booster. 
for every mission this is pretty much overkill and if you want to hot swap these mids out let me show you this real quick I do have a bunch of different things to uh, throw in my mids so um, I have multi spectrums if I really feel like I need them I have an extra target painter if I really want to run three target painters that was more so for the old fit um, if you want to play it safe take one of these target painters off let's do this you get throw on a shield boost amplifier and if we go down here you can see um, boost in just shy of uh, 2700 HP per four seconds so that's pretty damn good but I found I don't really need that for this fit let's go back to the target painter and in the lows for the Caldera Navy ballistic control systems and for my rigs I'm running flare catalyst 2 and a rigor catalyst 2 and this thing's doing a little over 3,000 DPS that is with drones and uh, a little over 10,000 alpha uh, got more than enough EHP, uh, just shy of 65,000. And I have found this is the setup that I run the most. I hardly ever change it from this with the exception of sometimes, like I said, taking that target painter out, putting the, the amplifier on just as a safety precaution. That's totally up to you. I do not run a MWD or a MJD. I have not found the need in any mission because what I do is I lock the targets so far out. Uh, Marauders also got a targeting bonus. So look at how far this thing could, could target. And um, no issues there. Lock them up, put the target painters on, get everything moving towards you and just blast it as quick as it, uh, as it tries to attack you. And let's see, out of curiosity, so I want to show you in the guidance computer, you could run them with no scripts, so it gets a bonus to both. Um, range is 51 km, and if I do this, and if I put on precision, um, lowers the range down to 43, but it's e easier for hitting frigates and things like that. Again, totally up to you. Most of the time, I'm running the range script, so let me put that in there and in there. And you can see torpedoes hit out to 60 km. So not quite a sniper. It's sort of in that in-between range. And where this thing really benefits is um, when you run a Kronos. Now I've run the blaster and the railgun fit. The railgun fit is okay, but not that great. I don't think the DPS is very good. Um, I think it's right around 2,000. But there's also a blaster fit. But the problem with the blaster fit is even with faction ammo, which is expensive, um, the range, it, it starts to drop off at about 20. So it's a constant having to manage the bastion. Then you have to run a micro, uh, micro warp drive. Um, so it lowers your capacity. I'm not quite kept stable on this fit. Nine minutes is more than you need for any mission. But like I said, with the Kronos, it just... The Kronos has all the downfalls it had before. Uh, it's just flawed as a ship overall. Although it's fun to run polarized blasters, let me tell you, um, that thing is absolutely nutty <laughs> with polarized blasters. You're talking, I think it's over... Um, if I remember, Squishy had a post that said pretty close to like 6,000 DPS or something like that. I think I was pushing like 4,500 or 5,000. It's actually a lot of fun to fly if you like managing things like that, but not for me. And I have a couple other fits. Uh, this is with uh, Caldari Tops, and let's load up the uh, short range. And you can see 3,200. And just out of curiosity, I want to load the long range. Let's go with that. Uh, flight range. And let's go to, if I put in range, I'm just curious. I could fly out to uh, 108 km. Jeez, that, that's enough to snipe. And it does the DPS the old Golem used to do. So um, using long range ammo is perfectly fine if you need it for certain missions. But I found just pull everything in, get it moving towards you, and just pick, pick things off as they're 60 km out. And the last fit I want to show you is polarized. So the difference with the polarized fit is polarized torpedo launchers four of them here um, notice uh, the resistances over here and your total overall ehp is only thirty thousand. so you're losing 30 
5,000 EHP by running Polarized. To counter that, I strongly, strongly suggest running the Shield Boost Amplifier. Uh, it gives you a nice little bump. So about, what was that, about 7,800? Uh, somewhere around there um, to your Shield Booster. You're going to need that to counter not having any of these resistances. So you got to be really careful. And that's the only thing that changed on this fit. And you could even, if you want, you could get one rid of this. And let's search this real quick. Um, you could put something cap related to give you a little more cap time. Uh, control circuit 2. See, puts you at about 14 minutes. And my god, if, if you're not finishing missions in 14 minutes with this amount of DPS, there's something very, very wrong. And let's load uh, Rage. Um, 3800 DPS. <laughs> yeah, holy crap. This thing is a lot of fun to fly. Yeah, I found it to be pretty safe. It depends on the mission. Um, most stuff doesn't start shooting you till below 60 km, so it's all within your range. You could split your guns, as you saw in my video, and just take things out as quick as they come in. There's really no issues. So if you got any questions, I will link all these fits in the description below. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was my bookmarks. And I wanted to point something out that I thought was hilarious. A keen-eyed viewer actually noticed this from my first video before I rearranged my bookmarks. If you could see this RMT. RMT stands for Real Money Transaction. Now, the first group that I ever met, so this was back when I first started the the game for the first time i don't even have the account anymore because it was on um it was either on a hotmail or some some like earthlink email uh that doesn't exist anymore and they gave me this link they wanted you to boost specific characters with uh plex and also if you wanted to you could buy tunes through this website that's why i have this bookmark uh it's hilarious when i go back and think about it now i don't know i i assume groups still do it now especially when you look at the northeast corner of the map and all the bots that are out there but it's nothing i ever got the chance to do i don't have very much money i haven't had very much money ever since uh, i got out of college but it is funny that that bookmark is there. Uh, it's long gone. I don't even know if the site still exists. I don't even remember how much they were asking. I think it was a two, three hundred dollars for a boosted character, and it was the reason why I quit the game the first time. I, I joined the group. They wanted you to download all these botting programs, and um, what else did they want? Uh, they had they had botting channels that fed the bots. It was just absolutely ridiculous and i thought it was so stupid and it was the reason why i've never lived out in null it's also the reason if we look here although i'm not with this group anymore this is how i found bootstrap mining these are a great group of guys they hang out in npc null out in syndicate and they were some of the best people i ever got a chance to fly with just a very very good group of people if you're looking to to hang out in just a happy npc space that you don't have to deal with all the politics and you have NPC stations. Bootstrap is a great group. They will get you into a mining ship for free. They give a free package out to any new member. And they're just a really, really good group of guys. They also have a bunch of high stack stations as well. And they ally themselves with a German group out there called Vega. Just good dudes to, to deal with if you want to be out in Syndicate. But I want to go through my bookmarks. Let me open up a new tab so you don't have to stare at that. This is just my Reddit link. Uh, gate check. I'm going to click this one. And this will be uh, Dodixie to Jita. And why I use this. This is just to see what's going on on that flight path. If I'm moving uh, any materials. I know probably to avoid this area. Because there's ganking going on. And if we go to shortest and check. Uh, what I'm looking for here is specifically these low sec systems. Um, I'm checking to see if there are any smart bomb kills. It'll it'll say it over here. Uh, if there are no smart bomb kills, I know it's safe to take a shuttle through this area. Saves a couple jumps. That's, so that's why I have that link. 
I have just standard Z kill, my Z kill board, all the areas I hang out in. And we'll look at this one, the Una, for example. This is why I would use this. I could see, oh, look what was going on yesterday. See all these MTUs that were killed. I check this list, and if these guys are not on my list, I will add them to my uh, into my block list. So they show up as red on on the on chat, and if they uh, fly towards my MTU, just so I know they're MTU hunters. So that is that. Then I have all my missions. Then I have my guide, so my burner playlist. Uh, I have all my fittings right here, my T4 mission guide, and this is somebody else's mission guide that I like to reference every once in a while. I have all my NPSI info, so my public fleets, Spectre, Fun, and Tuskers. Um, sorry, Bombers Bar, I, I don't know where your link is, but I promise you <laughs> there should be a Bombers Bar link in there. Uh, those are the groups that I fly with the most. Uh, these are just the combat sites and escalations you could get from high sec i have the hauling channels if i need to move goods the lp store for when i run missions this is what i could spend my lp on i have a time converter because i live in colorado which is mountain time so it's just nice to have a, all the npsi fleets run off of eve time so good good to see when uh, fleets are going to happen and easy for me to convert then we have the uh, Eve Marketer. This just shows me different prices of everything. I uh, price check tool, and I have Dotlin for checking Sov, D Scan for feeding FC's D Scan information. So if I'm a hunter, this is when I would be using this uh, exploration guide. Uh, and these are two other wikis. Wormholes. You can actually tell what type they are by uh, certain visual aspects so that's a great bookmark to have uh, relic and data sites this shows you which relic and data sites you should not enter there's a, a specific few that'll spawn insta spawn npcs i actually lost a ship the other day uh, so you want to avoid those if all possible uh, another fun ink and this is just all the things that we've been talking about right here. So Gate Camp Check, Dotland, Z Killboard. So basically everything I have in my bookmarks they have right there. And this is one of the coolest things. I will definitely post a link to this. The Novice Frigate Yearbook. It's a teeny tiny bit out of date. But it goes into the absolute nitty gritty of every damn frigate. How to fly them. Uh, what they're good against, what's what they're bad against, their strengths, their weaknesses. This is one of the coolest guides, and I may even make a video about this because because this document is so awesome. But anyway, I'll post a link for that, and let's go back to Eve. Last thing I have is my invasion guide. I sometimes need to know if Edencom are staged in a system because I am pro Triglavian. So these systems I have to be careful if I go into. I could get attacked by uh, the specific Edencom NPCs. So that is why I have that bookmark. So as always, I just wanted to thank everybody who watched this video. Um, I had a really, really awesome year and a great beginning to this year. Uh, in terms of Eve, I'm so glad that I'm um, flying fleets again with Bjorn B. Um, if you check my in-game character and you check my bio, it has a link to his in-game channel, his Twitch. He has been doing a lot of public fleets. Uh, this is in the morning U.S. time zone. It usually is 11 a.m. Mountain Time is when he flies his fleets. Just keep an eye out on Twitch. He is a great streamer. So thanks again, Bjorn B, for doing what you do. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been an awesome journey for this uh, mission guide. I never expected it to go past part one. And for us to be on part four right now, it's really neat to see how this journey has gone along. Something I never, ever planned. It's also really neat to see that ships in the game are changing, especially for running missions. Um, you don't think that is something that CCP really thinks about, but um, with their change in, with the famine patch and with the golem and just everything else, um, I really do think they're moving in the right direction. I'm having a great time in the game. 
enough to be willing to give them my 15 bucks a month. So keep it up, CCP. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you have any other topics that you guys would like me to talk about, leave those in the comments below as well. Um, I'm kind of out of ideas right now, but um, I do have some thoughts. I'll continue doing all the other videos that I do for all my uh, NPSI fleets. Um, any of the uh, special holiday activities, I'll continue to put those out as well. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Fly safe.